Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Track Limits podcast. We're here, Henny, in yes, are. beautiful Portugal. I see you are in full vacation mode. Full on since a few days ago. I love and it. I'm not looking back. I love it. Well, we were poolside today mm-hmm. watching the Italian Grand Prix. Yep. And I can't believe I'm saying this, but Ferrari got the strategy right. What? <laughs> How? When? Where? What? I know. All the, oh my God, that was Charles, Charles Leclerc wins Monaco. Um, yeah. Not Monaco. Oh my oh, God, Monza. I mean, he did win. He Monaco. did win Monaco as well. But after five years, 2019 yeah. was mm-hmm. the last time he won Monza. He's gone out to say the two races that he wants to win every year: Monaco, Monza. He did it. Wow. I mean, you can't you can't write it any better yeah. than what we what we saw today. And at the end of it, it's also on the back of another team who fumbled yep. the bag. I. I think anyone can agree. And more so, not only just fumbled it, and, and we're talking about McLaren here, um, I think they had opportunities to unfumble it, and they still continue not to, whether it is to fight for the driver's uh, championship and have Lando swap with Oscar, like we were talking, because mm-hmm. every point matters. And every point matters. Those three or, f- what, three? I mean, he three. did get the fastest lap, yeah. so mm-hmm. even those two points would have mattered. Yeah. And clearly... McLaren still has a lot to learn. They're just not used to being at the top. And we even said if this was, let's say, Lewis Hamilton or Max Verstappen in the shoes of Lando Norris, first of all, I don't think what we saw in lap one would have happened with their own teammate. Like, you have to be aggressive. You are fighting for that championship, knowing that Red Bull is struggling. Yep. They have nowhere close to the pace that you should be having mm-hmm. or they should be having. And for them to make that silly mistake of leaving or for him to make that make yeah. uh, mistake of leaving that room available to your own teammate yeah. was i think the stupid call but what a pass it, beautiful it had to be the overtake pass of, of the year. year right overtake of the year on the outside yep and like you mentioned right one millimeter away from crashing into your teammate but yep. piastri was like i'm just going for it yeah i love that i I've, i really wonder what that meeting was that in the morning for them to sit down across each other and be like is are we race on or am I helping you defend? Like, oh, or, or like, even if Andrea yeah. was sitting there and be like, is this team orders now? Are we optimizing for Lando to push for that championship or yeah. are we doing just go out there and race each yeah. other? Yeah. So I think it was a bold call for them not to do it. But I mean, listen, um, I thought it was an entertaining race because of it. It was, it was very entertaining. I mean, with McLaren, they don't do team orders. What we heard on the radio is they do papaya rules. Oh, God. What, what does a, that mean? I don't even know what that means, but I think what that means is no one knows what's happening. Yeah. Uh, even now, at the end of the race, Lando looked crushed. Mm. He looked disappointed. Of course. Um, I think they're definitely going to talk about it, right? Priority needs to be given to him in the Drivers' Championship. Yep. The Team Championship, though, is still very much up in the air. Yes. But I think everyone thinks it's leaning towards McLaren. They're yeah. now 10 points behind Red Bull. Yeah. I, I really wonder, because we, we thought it was a two-way race. Are we anticipating a three-way race with, with Ferrari. Ferrari now? They brought their biggest upgrade, and it worked out. They were the only team that can do the one stop and make it go the whole stint. Yep. Yep. And they didn't, yes, he had tire degradation, but it wasn't as bad as no, the McLaren. They literally said, they had the best car, and they said, we cannot make that one stop yep. work. So for Ferrari to do that, it's impressive, and we're about to inter- go into another race that will yes. require your tires to be alive. Um, so I'm, I really hope that... Yep. We get to see a three-way battle. And it's an upgraded Ferrari, yep. right? Charles also, his pace at the end. I mean, yeah, the strategy benefited him, but yes. he was pushing. Yeah. And his lap times were quite good. They yeah. were comparable almost to Piastri's lap Look times. Piastri obviously got the lead, I think, down to, what, two, three seconds yeah, by the I very think. end. So what, give it two more laps, <laughs> three more laps? But that's the story of the year almost. Yeah. It feels like I'm mentioning that almost every time yes. with McLaren. Yeah. Two, three more laps, and they would have won. Yeah. It's like... But it's like you just said it. It's it's not even that the fact that they're making they're making the mistakes that lead them to do that, yeah. where they're chasing mm-hmm. another team down. When again, like this race, they started one and two. How do you not secure when you have the best car? Yep. And oh, it just it really pisses me off because this is something as a Red Bull fan, like we would not. I haven't yet to see that when no. Rebel Red Bull was dominant, it was yeah. secure. Like yeah. they know what their strategy was. Again, on the radio. You have a driver that was telling 
asking uh, their their team, yep. should we should we be fighting Lando or do I let we, him go? Yeah, do I let him go? Yeah. If the if it was that if it was McLaren or Ferrari, <laughs> other than this weekend, they would have yeah. been like asking their drivers, "Do you want to race it or <laughs> do you want to go on the?" It's long indecisive. Set? Yeah, it's very, very indecisive. indecisive. Yeah. yeah. So that that's interesting. I mean, again, McLaren aside, Mercedes. Huge weekend for them generally. I yep. think even outside of the race, Kimi Antonelli yes. had to be one of the biggest stories of the weekend. 100%. Um, <laughs> you know, let's just say it didn't work out per se, the FP1 session. I was watching it live. Yeah. I literally don't watch FP Any sessions really? at all. But I'm like, you know, let me just tune in and try it. Yeah. And I saw the first push lap. I'm like, okay, cool. Yep. Everyone was touting it. I mean, it was a fast lap. But to be fair, like, it was also expected, yeah. six, seven minutes into the <laughs> session. No one really had set a lot of fast laps. Yeah. But the second lap, you know, I think Julian Palmer really leaned in on the idea of inexperience yep. being a big cause for why he spun and mm-hmm. why he didn't know that, hey, the rear grip on my tires might not be actually that hot. Extreme, yeah. And we might need to wait a couple more laps to push at that level. Yep. What did you think of that FP1 session? Uh, I mean, it kind of told the world that there's a lot of pressure on him. Mm-hmm. And honestly, if Toto didn't come out last week and hint that they weren't about to announce him, yep. I think it would have been more easier for him to just be clock and clock out yep. as many rookie drivers do or just F2 drivers are coming in. Yep. Um, but every like everyone's eyes was on him. And I think the pressure got to him where yeah. he's like, I have to show up every lap. Yeah. I have to prove everyone that I am I belong. Mm-hmm. Uh, even though like everyone knew that you were going to get that seat, you literally had nothing to prove. Yep. Where other drivers, yes, every time you get that opportunity, whether it's you're coming from F2 or you've just been a reserve driver, mm-hmm. they've, they've come to show every race or every lap they have to work with the team and help them with the balance and the strategy yep. and the long pace and the short, but they still try to do that soft yep. push lap. And other than that, I think like Kimmy is going to be in the league for many years. I, I really don't think he's going to be there. He's done all the private tests. He's had enough experience, mm-hmm. um, even off track, like off race that he can pick it up. Yeah. I, I really think he will have the same trajectory as Oscar Piastri. Yeah, I yeah. think that's that's valid. I, yeah. I agree with that. I think, again, we were talking about this. Toto Wolff's legacy is on the line. very much contingent on this, mm. right? He's trying to build the next Max Verstappen. Yep. He obviously has gone out to say multiple times mm. that he regrets passing mm. on Max Verstappen yep. back in the day. He was trying to sign Max Verstappen. I think there was someone who told me that he was carrying a contract around to almost every race weekend, ready to sign Max at any moment, (laughs) which is insane. But the fact of the matter is, if, you know, Kimi Antonelli comes in and isn't a superstar, this actually still might be seen as a failure. It is. Right? And because, you know, George Russell had to spend four or five years in a Williams Mm -hmm. before he got that opportunity to leapfrog someone right, right into there. that Mercedes seat and put someone like Carlos Sainz yeah. into a Williams, it That's better rough. pay off. It, it better. better pay off. Yep. But again, the question is, why rush it? Why yeah. rush it with Kimi? If he's just turning 18, two years in a junior in a junior car like Williams yep. or even another team for him to get the grasp of things, I think would not do anyone damage. Like, and he wasn't going anywhere. No, and I really think when they Mercedes did sign him, there must have been something of a heavy exit clause that I don't think any team was going to fight. Yep. Um, so they kind of had him secured. Even F2, he really didn't show much yet. Like, no. yes. Sixth, I think, Primal. seventh in yeah. the Drivers' Championship. Like, that really doesn't... Uh, same could have been said about Ollie. True. But True. he got his seat, too. So, True. I mean, we've talked about this in previous race reflections. There's so many drivers that deserve to be there who have proven it, yep. whether it's F2 championships or if they've been reserve drivers, they've yep. performed really well. Congrats to Jack Duhon, who yes. you know kept quiet, yep. kept his head down, and got his seat after how many years? Mm-hmm. So for someone like Kimi to, you know, skyrocket like you just said, it just shows other drivers that money and influence plays the role. Exactly, it plays the role. Exactly. And speaking of the junior drivers, now we have two seats open in F1. Mm-hmm. We have the Sauber seat. We have the V Carb seat. Yes. I think everyone's hoping Liam Lawson gets that B-carb seat. Yeah. Um, you know, I think we both agree with that, yeah. right? Daniel Ricciardo, great driver, but yeah, his days are over. Yeah. You know, let's let's get some fresh blood in. Liam Lawson has proven in that V-carb yeah. he can make magic happen. The other seat, though, is interesting. Mm. And, you know, there's a big rumor going around Teo Porcher potentially being in contention. Yeah. There's also Gabriel Bordatello. Look what he did to today. first. Last to first, what Incredible. a statement win. Incredible. You know, the safety car benefited him for sure, but he still made a lot of overtakes. Of course. 
could that be a person we see in F1 next year? 100%. I, I don't doubt it. But also, Mateo is coming into mm-hmm. that role. So I really think he will have influence of who he wants. Correct. I really don't know who he has his eyes uh, eyesight on. on but yeah. um, I, I would love to see Tio. Like, that would be fantastic. I think he also deserves it. Mm-hmm. Though he went into IndyCar and hasn't really done much yeah. to prove that he still has the edge. Yep. Um, so it would be interesting to see if they do even do any kind of testing with him, mm-hmm. private testing to see if he performs really well. Um, but yeah, I really, Gabriel would be dope. Um, I don't even know who else is on F2 grid that can leap. Yeah, I really can't even think, it's think if there's anyone else. I mean, Isaac Hajar right now is leading, but he's yeah. part of the Red Bull, Bull stable. Mm. I mean, he could be interesting for that V carb seat as well. I mean, maybe it's a, a, yeah. a go kind of a what, sleeper pick or yeah. whatever. Imagine. Right? I mean, hey, that French money can talk too. You never know. And a friend of the pod too. <laughs> yes. How cool would that be? <laughs> That'll be epic. That'd right? be amazing. That'd be great. So going back really quickly, Mercedes five seven. Yeah. Was that expected or was it not expected? I mean, Russell qualified third. Mm-hmm damage already first lap in Limitation, definitely yeah. didn't help good recovery drive lewis i think started I think six, kind of finished, seven? Yeah, around the same right p5 right p5 p5 yeah. right around the same that mercedes are we now talking going into baku that hey there's a chance that they're going to be the third best team like they were today or are we saying no it's anyone's game for baku yeah i i really think it's going to be they're the third i think mclaren again mm-hmm. ferrari second yep um, I, I'll put Mercedes third. Ahead of Red Bull. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Red Bull is a disaster right now. <laughs> um, I, I don't think anyone is questioning how disastrous of a weekend this was. Yeah. Because this was the one track that kind of suited that car, even when it wasn't in the right window. Yeah. Just the straight line speed, mm. the downforce that they had in this car, and yep. they were nowhere to nowhere. be found. Yep. It was even worse. So yep. for them to have any hope, I think, is optimistic, mm. unless they decide to bring an upgrade from the span of the last three weeks mm-hmm. turning into it i really think they're gonna even with max at his best we're looking at another p5 p6 which is literally what i said last week i think getting into here i was like it's either he finishes p2 or it's a disastrous week and i think we're gonna see a lot of that in the next few races we're gonna see ollie bearman yes. in baku is that fully confirmed fully confirmed nice okay. fully confirmed kevin magnuson 12 pennant penalty points yeah deserved (laughs) i don't think i've seen a race where he did not get a penalty and he had an incident today with gasly um but yeah ollie bearman getting another shot hopefully he does well i mean if he gets points in a half that speaks volumes that speaks volumes because everyone keeps saying oh he got points because he was in a ferrari to go in a half now and i mean the half was competitive Mm -hmm. here yep right with magnuson getting points yeah it's possible bearman comes in and shows us something pretty cool i mean i i I don't doubt it it's either him or hulk trying to secure that p10 because they do have that straight line speed Mm -hmm. and yes it is really tough overtaking on this unless you're on that back straight near the end yeah so if they can secure and have less degradation why wouldn't they get a point i really think and they can play some kind of team ward or whatnot, but that would be interesting between Hulk and him. Hit him. Uh, because who is it? Oh, it's Esteban. Yeah. Why did I think Hulk was staying? Yeah. Um, but that would be interesting. I think it would be good for Ollie to even get that little, little you know, race here and there because he's going to have to wait another few months before, before. he can touch that F1 card. Yeah. Last thing I want to talk about, Colin Pitt. Cole, I can't even pronounce his name. <laughs> Calvino. Cole... <laughs> you say it, honey. Yeah. It's Calpino. Calapino. Calapinto? Calapinto. Calapinto. Yes. Yeah. What's his first name? Franco? Frank? Franco? Frank? Franco. Let's call him Frank. Yeah. Frank. 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 What's good, Frank? Frank <laughs> did a great job. He did. Right? Great job coming in two days ago, I think. Yeah. What he first time in an F1 car. Pretty much. Jumped in. jumped in, did a great job in practice to work up to it. Probably saw Kimi crash and was like, oh, oh, I, have, I, I, hope. <laughs> I hope I can do something. <laughs> yeah. And then, yeah, I mean, he has, what, nine races. Yeah. We were talking the rumors, you know, how much money is he contributing? Know, half a million per race through sponsors. That is a lot for nine more races to go. Uh, very short lived, but again, that sponsor wants to get their name out there clearly. And you think, you know, I don't know, maybe, maybe the reason he wanted to do that is yeah. he knows these two seats are open. I don't think anything's possible on the V car side. Just the Red Bull stable is too big. Yeah. But maybe that Sauber side. Yeah. Why wouldn't you? It would be interesting. If a sponsor's offering a team like Kick or Sauber. Yeah. That amount of money, a million per race. Then <laughs> I would take that too. And if he can, I mean, he performed. I again, this is one race, so yeah. we can't really judge it. Yeah. But if he can consistently perform P twelve or above yes. on a Williams that is struggling, 
And I, I like Sauber will be like, well, we'll use them as a case to build our 2026 car. Yeah. Uh, we'll use 2025 to develop him and help hopefully get him into uh, a stage where he is competitive. Yeah. 2026, fresh start for him. And they are making their money making and money. he's performing well. Love it. Yeah. Well, Baku is coming up. We're also approaching September. We're hoping Adrian Newey finally makes his mind up and lets us all know what we want to know. Yes. Um, anything else before we sign off here? No, I think this this might have been one of those races that we we're going to look back and be like, that was top five of the season. Yeah. I mean, there's eight more races to go, so we can constantly be changing that now that everyone is close yep. on the grid. But this is the season, or this is the year we ever, like, we've always wished for. So I'm super yeah. excited to see well, us going. Especially also, like you mentioned, if Lando Norris can get close and we can go to Abu Dhabi with an actual title battle. Oh, my God. I wow. would love to see that. And I know there was a post that I saw from a page. I'm not going to read all yeah. of it. But uh, our friends at the M Sport Banter put together six scenarios mm. how Lando Norris could win. Oh, okay. Let's hear it. I mean, each one of them requires him to win quite a number of races, oh, but he'll have to win six races, basically. Oy. In scenario one, there is a scenario where he could technically win three races, yep. but he would need Max to basically drive blind. <laughs> okay, so that's <laughs> and, not going to happen. And not get a top five finish, yep. basically. I mean, with how bad this car is, yeah. I don't think Max will ever allow himself to finish out of P10. I concur. Yeah. Checo, on the other hand, that's a different story. <laughs> But Max how do you get passed that. by George? <laughs> how <laughs> he had you... damage? <laughs> Check out, explain yourself right now. You were behind Magnuson at one point. Okay, I'm sorry. All right. Anyway, we got to wrap this go up. Night, yeah. yeah, we, we got to wrap this up. Here. Thank you for watching. Drop your prediction below. Do you believe Lando Norris can catch Max Verstappen by the end of the season? Hope you enjoyed this episode. We'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.